सेव किया था ना मैं सिर्फ इसलिए गया था क्योंकि उसने मुझे कॉल किया दैट्स इट बट लिसन तो सेव इट फॉर समवन एल्स जिंदगी में सेव करना जरूरी है मगर जब बात पैसों की हो सिर्फ सेविंग से काम नहीं चलेगा इक्विटी म्यूचुअल फंड्स में इन्वेस्ट कीजिए और अपने सेविंग्स को आगे बढ़ने का मौका दीजिए म्यूचुअल फंड इन्वेस्टमेंट्स आर सब्जेक्ट टू मार्केट रिस्क रीड ऑल स्कीम रिलेटेड डॉक्यूमेंट्स केयरफुली There are two bits in the human evolutionary puzzle that we yet to understand fully and we got major clues into both of them this week. One, why are humans able to control our voices so much better than other animals can including our own closest animal relatives, the other primates? Why am I able to talk here and articulate words when primates cannot? Two, Why is our skull shaped differently as compared to other apes and primates and why do we have smaller muscles for chewing our jaw is much smaller than other primates so what happened there both it turns out are evolutionary advantages accorded by losing a specific function and gaining a greater survival advantage we have more control over our voices because somewhere along our evolutionary history we lost a part of our larynx that other primates still have this loss then helped us control our vocal cords better and chewing well it turns out our way of chewing as compared to other primates is much more efficient and provided an evolutionary advantage for us and in fact helped us grow smarter as we speak air moves from our lungs through our larynx and all the associated muscles there which then vibrate and produce sounds that exit out our mouth these muscles are the vocal cords and they are responsible for speech and language and song a team of japanese scientists studied for many years the throats and voice production of 43 species of primates There are over 300 species of primates on earth today and of course humans are one of them. So this team studied these 43 different species and they found that all of them had a very similar voice mechanism anatomically except for humans. They all had the same structure in their throat. They had an extra pair of muscles just above their vocal cords and these are called the vocal membranes. These vocal membranes or vocal lips are like flaps they are another layer that sound produced by the animals had to pass through and the researchers found that these muscles actually made sounds produced by the voice box more unstable the vocal membranes introduced more chaos into the sound and made the sounds more erratic they provide less control over sounds making them grating to hear Humans however do not have vocal membranes at some point in our evolutionary history we lost them and by contrast the sounds we produce from our mouth are much softer and more stable and we have more control over them naturally we speak languages with elaborate accents and we can produce songs with words upon further analysis the team discovered that the simplification of the laryngeal anatomy that of our voice boxes and our voice production is what makes our sounds more complex and stable the evolutionary loss of vocal membranes is what allowed human speech to avoid spontaneous disturbances and acoustic chaos and just inconsistency that is common in sounds produced by other primates So ironically simplification of our vocal system is what helped us produce more complex sounds the evolutionary loss of vocal membranes is what allowed us to gain the evolutionary advantage of speech and then there's the question of mastication and chewing and how much energy is expended on it chewing prevents choking it makes food safe to pass through our food pipe and breaking it down physically into smaller chunks and adding saliva to it makes it more easily digestible as well we've all seen cows how they sit and chew their cud for hours and hours and hours and then on the other hand we've also seen dogs who swallow everything excitedly without chewing Humans are somewhere in the middle we're more reasonable according to our standards we definitely chew our food what we eat are typically soft cooked foods chewed for short periods of times we don't chew like cows do for hours and we also don't chew hard materials like say walnut shells or sugarcane husk like many other mammals do chewing harder foods is even harder 
The amount of energy that is required to break hard food down physically by the teeth goes on increasing the more harder something is to chew. The softer the food, the less the energy required to chew and convert it to a digestible form, not to mention time saved. Humans typically spend about 35 to 45 minutes chewing every day. Chimpanzees and other primates, on the other hand, can spend upwards of 5 or 6 hours a day just chewing food that they intend to swallow. Chewing food is such an integral process to our evolutionary lives that there is a whole suite of adaptations on our skulls just to make our chewing more efficient. And this is the case with all animals. Except humans just seem to be much more efficient at chewing than any other primate and this undoubtedly would have played a very major role in our evolution. This second study was conducted in England and it tested the amount of energy that goes into chewing by giving participants hard and soft gum and then measuring their oxygen and carbon dioxide levels. The researchers wanted to test only the energy expended while chewing, not the energy expended preparing the stomach for receiving a meal. So both kinds of gum were flavorless. The participants were asked to chew different kinds of gum and their breathing and energy and metabolism was measured. The team found a significant difference. They found that soft gum raised metabolic resting rates by 10%, whereas people who chewed hard gum saw their metabolic rates when resting rise by 15%. This is a significant difference. And this indicates that the fact that we started cooking and making foods that were softer and started grinding them up with tools and even started growing crops that are easier for us to chew would have helped our ancestors conserve a lot of energy as compared to other primate cousins and other human cousins. Chewing involves both vertical and horizontal jaw movements and our movements are extremely efficient and this in turn would have shaped our faces because we have a much smaller jaw. Our skulls are actually quite different looking than other primates. Just compared to early homo species, our pre-human and human ancestors, we can tell that our faces have been shaped very differently and in accordance with our reduced reliance on forceful chewing. We have flatter faces and shorter jaws. Both of these enable us to perform vertical and horizontal movements much more efficiently. In general, our chewing and feeding processes are metabolically so much more energy efficient than other primates. And this in turn has helped us develop more complex evolutionary behavior such as improved cognition and of course speech and language.